Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Best and Slot here with part 12 of the Creation Kit tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at lights and effects. We're going to add water, we're going to add mist, we're going to add lots of cool stuff and we're going to talk about how light interacts with our external effects. So, as always, you want to go ahead, load your data and load the mod you're going to be working with, whatever it is you want to add a bit of light to. We're working with my updated Naxxus tomb, it's basically one room that I figured, you know, for the purpose of this tutorial and the quest design which we're going to do after this, that's going to be our next tutorial, it makes more sense to have one focus room so we can get the core principles of quest design and level design and light design down. So that's what we've done, we've got Naxxus tomb here. As always, make sure it is your active file. Now once you've loaded that, load it up in your uh, cell view window on the right and you want to get your dungeon looking something like this, it should be quite dark. Now to do this, first things first, we're going to tick the FX button and as you can see that's going to make things like uh, the banner over there, that's going to start moving. Not strictly important for lighting but it will be important in a minute. Um, the lighting button you can tick and untick. Technically this doesn't make sense to me. Ticking it should make it look like this and unticking it should look like this but uh, that's not how it works. Basically you don't want it to be this very bright thing. You want to tick that and make it look something like this. And you can also tick a sky section, but I've not really seen a point in that. It's recommended, but I don't actually see why. If you don't want to work with that, don't worry about it. So, as you can see, lighting in Skyrim isn't actually done by the source. So if we look at this candle, this candle isn't actually giving off any light of its own. We have to add the source using our own methods. Thankfully, this is quite easy to do. What we need to do is go to World Objects and then Light. And that's going to give you loads of options of different lights. If we wanted to add a candle light, we'd search candle, and we could drag in a candle light. Personally, I like a particular light called Alakia Orange Flicker, but that's just because I like the colour it gives. You can mess around with all these, go through, have a look, and you'll find different lights that you like in certain situations. Alakia just happens to be one that I like. Now, there's actually four different types of lighting, which I'm going to try and show you here. First things first, we'll drag this one in. This is called an Omni Light. There's two types of Omni Light. And as you can see, it gives you a bulb with a purple pivot in the middle. Now this casts shadows. If we move that around, you can see the shadow of the candlestick moving around with it. And that's great, because it looks far more realistic than a shadowless light. Unfortunately, it also takes a lot of rendering power, because it has to actively cast shadows as things move in the way. To avoid that, most of the lights in Skyrim are done via NS lights. So if we look at this Bleak Force Candle Light 01 NS, that means no shadow. So we've put that one up and as you can see there's no longer a shadow underneath the um, candlestick. You may also see those just called Omni, NS, Omni, Omni. Omni is that type of light. It casts light in all directions. You don't want any more than three or possibly four shadow casting lights in an area. Um, the max is actually four, but if you put four in and then a player comes in and casts candlelight or has a torch that's going to cast shadows, that will actually cut one of your lights out. Plus they render slowly, they hit on FPS, you just want to try and stick to no shadow lights as much as you can. We also have spotlights, which uh, if I can find one I will show you. Do, do, do. Let's just have spot quickly. Okay, mm, yeah. Default candlelight 01 spot. So this is basically a spotlight. You know, I don't really have to tell you guys how that works. That's basic spotlight I think if you just want to highlight a specific area, just drag that over it and as you see it naturally lights it up without needing a specific light source. There is also a fourth which you will really, rarely find yourself using called a hemi light. Now this is basically an omni light but cut in half. Um, it's quite hard to show, in all honesty, but basically past a predefined point, this light won't show, won't give off any light. So it's an omni light, except in going in all directions, it only goes in two. That simple, but for now, just to show you guys, we are going to drag in Alakia Orange Flicker. Flicker means basically it flickers, and you know a torch would flicker, so it's always good to find ones. A candle would flicker, I should say. As you can see, it kind of pulses very slightly, just adds a little hint of realism. And there we go. So, as you can see, already the dungeon looks a lot better. It looks naturally lighted, the candles look like they're giving off a light source. 
but we can add a bit more to this we can make it a bit more interesting and we're going to do this via effects so instead of light we're going to go into movable static and we're going to take fx mist low zero one and this is why we need fx ticked up there we want to go ahead and drag that in and you should get something that looks like this a big gray ring and if you tilt your sort of finger down you'll see some mist as well which uh, looks kind of cool as you can see near the lights there it's um, a little bit more orange and over here towards the camera it's kind of grey and this makes sense because you know it's reacting to the light and it would react to your torch as well however if you wanted to use this mist as more of a ambiance setting tool and you wanted it all a specific colour to match a theme you got for your dungeon we can do that as well there are drawbacks but we can do it using something called external emittance now before I do that I should say if you can't see these grey rings make sure you've hit M. M toggles markers on and that will enable you to see everything that you can see on my screen. Okay so we've got our mist selected but say we want it all to be the colour of these candles. We want this light to extend all the way throughout the mist. To do that we need to make sure it's selected then we're going to hit the dash key on our keyboards or the um, dash key slash minus key whatever you want to call it hit that and that will bring up something called reference batch action now we're gonna take set external emittance on this and then we're gonna go to interior light and we're gonna find the light that we used which was allocate orange flicker this basically sets the it just sets the mist to the colour of the Alakia orange flicker. That's it. If we wanted to set it to an exterior light, um, we can't do it with mist. We can do it with some other things. We can make beams of light come down from the ceiling, set them to the colour of the day. You know when you go through a dungeon, it's got like a blue beam coming down? That is also done via external emittance. I'm going to click go. And as you can see now, you saw the colour change there. All the mist is sort of this orangey kind of shade, and it looks quite cool. It's quite atmospheric, I think. We're going to go ahead and grab our mist, and we're going to hold S, and we're going to scale that upwards just so it covers the entire dungeon. So to do that, all I did was hold S and then move my mouse to the left. So we've got some very cool mist, very very cool. But uh, how about adding some water? I know a lot of you have had problems with water, with it not working, so I'm going to quickly show you how to do water. It is dead simple, really very simple. This isn't going to be deep swimming water, this is simply going to be like a pool of water as an effect that you can walk through and adds a nice little extra layer of depth to a dungeon. And then we're going to do something very cool at the end in terms of our lighting. So let's search for pool, and this is in the movable static section. And we're going to get something called Mineral Pool Big Water 01. I'm going to drag that in. And as you see, you get this kind of pool of water. Now you want to take this just below the bottom, the uh, sort of the floor, hold S, drag to the left, make it huge. I mean, you could duplicate it if you wanted. I, 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 I just personally just cover the area in it. And if we zoom in now, as you see, we now have a misty, flooded dungeon which uh, looks very cool in my opinion we could sort of undo it a little bit if we wanted the water to just sort of just hide underneath the rocks that kind of thing but uh, yeah I think that's a level I'm happy with there that's quite cool I think it's that simple to add uh, sort of trudging water and if you do it sparingly particularly towards the bottom of a dungeon where it would naturally make sense for water to run it's going to look very cool and as you can see the light is actually catching on it over there and that adds another layer Lighting is so important to your dungeons, guys. It adds so much realism and depth, and without it, they just look super boring. Super, super boring. There is one more thing we can do, however. You will have seen that some dungeons have a blue tinge, some have a red tinge, some are more contrasting, some... All dungeons have different lighting schemes, and this isn't done through actual lights. This is done through a setting in the cell itself. Now, to do mess around with this, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our cell view we're going to find Nax's tomb we're going to right click it, we're going to go to edit and then we're going to go to lighting and you'll get something called your lighting template here and at the moment it's not set to any but if we click none we've got all these templates here and these are all the different dungeon lighting templates so all we do is find one we like, I quite like 
Bleak Falls Barrow. Um, as you can see, there's actually three of these, close, far, and medium. This is um, the the distance of the lighting. It's hard to explain. Close means it'll be a bit more contrasting. Um, you know, it's going to be nice and sharp. Far means it's pretty much going to be washed out in the distance. It's going to be quite uh, foggy and hard to see. Not in a good way. You want to use that for bigger rooms, really. We're going to use close because it's quite a small room. Click apply. Click OK. Let's go back in, and as you can see, the whole place is darkened and taken kind of a different tinge to it. That wasn't the most obvious example. Yeah, obvious example. So we're going to click edit again and show you one more because this one should be obvious. Lighting, and we're going to set that to Azure's Star Template. Click apply. Click OK. And as you can see, although it's made it blue and it's noticeably blue, um, the contrast actually went up on this pillar here. You know, all reacted differently. Contrast and things all change. There's so many of these lighting templates you can mess around with, guys. I recommend you just go, have fun with it, enjoy it. Lighting is actually quite enjoyable compared to most of the things you do in dungeon, like nav meshing, or uh, you know, adding clutter, which is quite a slow process. Lighting is quick and produces noticeably good results. Um, that's about all I've got to show you. I'm going to take this into game quickly so I can show you what this, show you guys what this looks like in game. And after that, we shall be done. I shall see you there in a minute, guys. Cheers. So here we are in Naxx's tomb, uh, we see our seed in here which is central on cell, um, if you need to know how to do things like that and teleporting and everything else, simply go check my past tutorials, connecting external, whatever it was called, just check my past creation kit tutorials and I explain all of that in happiness. Right, so here we are in Naxx's tomb and we're going to check down and oh how beautiful is that? The answer? Fairy. So as you can see water's nicely flooded you can see the mist just sort of rolling over it if we hit F you can see our characters blue it's all blended in nicely we've got a chest here the mist is still orange as you can see there so it is still orange um, although it is obviously being tainted sort of a bluey color by the water and the cell lighting we added but uh, on the whole I think you guys will agree this is a, a vast improvement on what it looked like 10 minutes ago you know it was that flat boring colorless shadeless wreck and now it's it's interesting you know you could go in and you could see this being a real room and that's the important thing it's about making your rooms about making your dungeons your towns your villages your worlds your caves your your houses it's your your dreams reality it's about making them seem believable and real and a lived in space it's all that's one on one of dungeon design Make it seem like it would exist naturally in the world. Whether that's by lighting, enemies, quest design, whatever it is, clutter. Whatever it is you do it by, that is what it's about. So, Mr. Rudiger here, as he has been named about two seconds ago, and me would like to bid you adieu. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. I hope it helped. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them. I probably won't know the answer, <laughs> but other people may, and um, I will always give it a go if I can. Next tutorial, we are going to start looking at quest design, which is going to be linked with this dungeon here. I am going to knock it off Azure as I don't like the blue personally. It would suit a different type of dungeon, not this one. I'm going to knock it back to Bleak Falls Barrow or something. But we're going to stick like an amulet on this guy. We're going to put a unique enemy in here, and that's going to be the quest. We're going to get a quest giver. He's going to tell us to come in here. We're going to get the amulet, and we're going to return it to him. It's going to be very, very cool. Hope to see you guys there. Please like, comment, subscribe. It helps me massively. It means I can eat. It means my partner doesn't kill me. And various exciting things like that. And uh, I'd appreciate it, guys. Cheers. Love you all, as always. And I shall see you in the next video.